Hi everyone, it's Kate from Open Door Counsel and Life Coaching. Today is Truthful Tuesday, and today we're going to be talking about a little bit about anxiety and what the Bible has to say about that. On Truthful Tuesdays, we like to come on and do a video, either a scripture verse or a biblical principle, and how does that relate to our everyday life? So uh, most of us can relate to feeling a little bit anxious, right? Whether we have a test in school or it's work-related drama, maybe stress in our relationships, low self-esteem, even money troubles can bring on anxiety, can't they? You name it, we feel it, right? Don't we? We feel it physically in our bodies. Let me tell you, where our mind goes, our body follows. Emotional struggles and stress manifest in our bodies. It can show up immediately, like loudly, like uh, through headaches or tight muscles. Maybe you have a sick stomach. You're, maybe you can't eat. Maybe you're having diarrhea or even the shakes. Or it can show up slowly or quietly over time, like ulcers or digestive issues. Maybe weight gain, memory loss or impairment, heart disease, even high blood pressure. The Mayo Clinic has stress management uh, tips to include eating a healthy diet, getting lots of um, regular exercise and sleep, using relaxation techniques, maybe journaling, fostering good relationships, seeking counsel, having humor in your life. And I would say, yes, include these practices in your life. Include them. But in addition, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So, you know, we know what to do as humans, right? The Mayo Clinic has listed it out for us. We know, but we need to go one step further into God's word, which is the final word. You know, we live in a physical world and as you know, we have to do physical things in order to survive, right? We have to eat, we have to sleep, we got to poop, we got to pay our bills, right? So we're, emo but we're also like emotional beings, right? We need to be aware of our emotional wellness and do things to stay in that good, healthy, emotional space. But not only are we physical and emotional beings, we are also spiritual beings. There's three parts to us. Uh, there's a part that is eternal, this spiritual part of us. So we have to consider that in our, in our journey as well. So what does the Bible have to say about anxiety? I found in Philippians 4, 6 to 8, a verse that says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So let's break that down. It says, plain language, don't be anxious about anything. In every situation, pray, talk to God about it. When you talk to God, be thankful. Be thankful for what you do have. Present your requests to God. Let him know. These are my requests. And then what happens when we do this? It says the peace of God, which by the way is beyond our understanding. It's that kind of peace that when the whole world is crashing down around us, it's like a deep inner knowing that it's going to work out and be okay. Don't you want this kind of peace? This peace, God's peace, guards our hearts and our minds. Answer me this, when, is the, when, it, when, when you're attacked and feeling anxious, isn't it in your heart, isn't it in your mind? <sighs> yeah. The Bible adds that we should be thinking about certain things to keep us out of that anxiety zone. It says to think about things that are true and noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. But we don't always use those kind of words in everyday language. So I looked up the synonyms of some of those words to help us understand it better. So truthful means no lies. It's pretty easy. Noble means like someone who is well-born. So somebody who would talk about something that are, is a little bit higher than the common man, right? Something a little bit elevated. Right means appropriate or proper. Pure means authentic and genuine. Lovely can mean beautiful or engaging. Admirable is valuable and wonderful. Excellent could be magnificent or great. Praiseworthy can be creditable or honorable. We need, to, we need to think about things that are truthful, that are well-born, 
appropriate, proper, authentic, beautiful, engaging, valuable and wonderful, magnificent and great, creditable and honorable. When we do that, the Bible says that we, we ward off this anxiety. We're like equipped. Yes, we take care of our physical needs. Absolutely. We live in a physical world. We have physical needs. Yes, we seek out healthy people to unload on on times, right? We, we need each other. But we also obey God's word. We do what we know to do, physical, mental, spiritual. And guess what? The rest is on the one who sees us. One of God's names is called El Roy, or El, Ro, El Roy. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. E-L space R-O-I. It's the God who sees you. Rest assured, friends, he sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And he is just waiting for you to acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. He will make your paths straight. I'm Kate from Open Door Council and Life Coaching, and that's your Truthful Tuesday.